We've seen Mutalisks attempted in Ragnarok versus Clem yesterday. Will they come out? Cure, a player who's capable of all sorts of diverse styles. And here we go on to Royal Blood for map number one in the top right side of the map, representing Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It's Cure. And his opponent down here in the blue, our Zerg player, makes some noise for Ragnarok. All right, it's going to be Zerg versus Terran, a matchup we've seen so much of, and something where, of course, we keep talking about the whispers of Mech and the whispers of the Cyclones. We haven't seen too much of it just yet. When it did come out, it was quite successful. Ragnarok struggled with that against Clem, and I uh, am, of course, wondering if Cure wants to try his hand at it as well. Yeah, it is one of the funny things that's always been a feature of Terran, right, is that there's actually more than one way to really play the game, you know, and, and you can go with an entirely different unit comp, and uh, you can go, you know, into bio, then into mech later even. There's a lot of cool stuff like that uh, that can be attempted here. But for now, we're going to have two barracks made right away. Yeah, what, a, what an interesting opening. Two barracks, no Gask taken. So this is going to be a Marine kind of move out with a few Marines, maybe float one barracks to get an Overlord if it goes to a pillar. Yeah. And, and apply some sort of ground-based Marine pressure. Uh, you can, of course, go for like a bunker on the third base of the Zerg. Like lots of weird kind of, I'm going to deny your map control and threaten. You're never going to get a kill move, but you can maybe mess their build up. This build order looks primitive to me. Like, <laughs> this looks like it's from like 2009 or something. Uh, you know what I mean? 100%. Like, the, the man. first week of the game, you're like, well, I can get one barracks, but I could make a second. And they just make it both in the main. We don't really ever cast games like this, but, you know, that doesn't mean it can't be effective. Indeed, the first Overlord's going to come and see oh, that Marine. Did he miss it? Okay, no, he's going to Yeah, get it. a little slow to react there for Cure, but he should be able to get onto it pretty fast. I think the real power of these sort of build orders is surprise. You don't expect to be facing off against something like this. Command Center does go down on that expansion for Cure now. Non-stop Marine production. And that Overlord, it makes it to the pillar. No. Nicely done. If he turned that first Marine around, he might have got it. I mean, already, that's actually... Um that's really bad. I mean, this is strategy is basically engineered to get that Overlord. Um, and it doesn't. And he doesn't find a second one either. Uh, and it's far away enough. You don't really want to float a building over there to get that. Or, I mean, I guess you could. But, I mean, do you really want to stop production uh, at a time like this? Uh, and he's now getting a third barracks. With no gas this is, still. This is so odd. Now, there's a bunker. Uh, yeah, bunker at the third. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That, that's that's got to be it. It's all looking to snipe the third. Now the gases go down. What a bizarre opening. But I feel like the Overlord, you said it. It's a disaster. That survived on the pillar. It saw the Marines trying to sneak around. Already Lings are in production. I think Ragnarok should have realized this was coming up, and yet he hasn't spotted it. You know, it's funny, a, a bunker rush on the hatchery should just actually never work, but if you don't expect it coming, it can kind of, it's like the rug gets pulled out from under you here. Uh, now the hatchery is also not done, so he does have the ability to cancel this. Building a lot of Zerglings, building a lot of Zerglings and canceling the third is not great. If he was taking it on the other side, which he's going to, you know, that's normally all right. But keep in mind, Ragnarok's work account is low, only 28. He's building Zerglings here. And if those Marines can just scoot on home, it's a very playable position for Cure. So, um, you know, Ragnarok, I'd say overall, this hasn't been too bad of a game from him. Although this is a very weird one. I mean, we just don't, I feel like I've never ever casted this this game. Like this is definitely a one of a kind. You know, a lot of times when you've casted as long as we have, there's games where you go, oh, okay, I've kind of seen this before. I know what this is gonna look like. Yeah, um, I'm kind of putting it in that category of throwing your opponent off, right? Yeah. This is very much tournament StarCraft. You know, I think it's scary to pull out a build like this you don't have as much practice with. But on the other hand, being on the receiving end when you're on an important stage, you need this match to really secure that spot forwards as Ragnarok. And you're like, what exactly is this build order? It's very hard to anticipate when the next attack comes. Yeah, I like that you said that this is a tournament build. You're absolutely right. This is not a build you're just using every, every ladder game. Yeah. You're trying to get to GM. This is like, okay, I know that he hasn't dealt with this one yet. Now, there is a reason why we don't see builds like this, and one of them is that they don't, they don't really give you as many opportunities to engage uh, with the opponent. You know, Marines without medevacs, uh, you're just not allowed to make any mistakes with them. <laughs> they can't they can't get away if, if they, uh, the Zerg has enough to take them on. Yeah, um, a, a bit more raw fighting power than Hellions, but that lack of mobility, as you pointed out, it's 
really very much if you get surrounded you can get wiped he's seen a lot of zerglings there is a baneling nest on the way five overlords coming in at once in a lair for ragnarok ragnarok is only up a handful of workers so we can see everything right the players cannot ragnarok is clearly very paranoid about this next attack and i think he's got more than enough army to defend it cure he wants to still pressure but if he commits and gets surrounded, he could lose this game. So he doesn't know that though. We can see the work account. We can see how much Ling Bane there is. How does Cure make that read with, like you pointed out, a style that has no mobility? Yeah. Um, well, let's just see if, he, if he's going to be ready or not. The Marines are now committed to pushing out on the map. Uh, again, no medevacs means no second chances if you don't make this work. Uh, in theory, the Zerg should be able to see this coming and just make enough to stop it. But the question is, is Ragnarok going to do that? A scan. Oh, he's hiding his Zergling Banelings so well. You can see Q's vision. Q has no idea how many Zerglings there are. The Banelings are going to come in from the right side along with the Zerglings. But he's going to try and get away off Greed. The Banelings are so scary. Oh my god, he gets in there with a beautiful surround and Q's push has been completely shut down. Ragnarok did such a good job of just hiding everything. Even the scan saw nothing but queens. And I'll tell you what, as a Terran player, you cannot resist that. You've got to go in because if he's been building nothing but drones, you've got to punish him. Unfortunately for Cure, it was a trap. And now Ragnarok is firmly in control of this game. Yeah, and you know, losing an army that big like that, it's the worst possible thing that can happen. I mean, the Banelings got premium connections. Uh, the lings that were killed, I mean, whatever, they're lings, they're expendable. And this really open up, uh, opens up a lot of different avenues for Ragnarok. I mean, he could continue to grow on the map. Terran doesn't have a third base planted yet either. Um, you know, on paper, this is a win so far here for Ragnarok. Absolutely, Q is going to need to dig deep, sending some medevacs out to start some harassment. They'll move around the flanks and look to pick off units and get some good trades. There's always the chance to make big epic comebacks, but Ragnarok is a very decisive player. He's, he tends to just love Massling Bane. You can see he's staying low on gas to make sure he has an abundance of units. Cure gets a pretty good trade there, but it's only like really just tiny little dents in the Zerg. And look at the creep spread on the map. I mean, the growth rate of Ragnarok is not really being stalled out at all. Yeah, I mean, the, the creep is getting pretty insane here. And you know, uh, one thing with Terran is that, you know, if you don't trade effectively with that first push, the Zerg should just pretty much always be ahead. Now, uh, does Ragnarok have enough to then deny this third base that's about to be landed? We're gonna find out. Does pull back, wasn't quite ready for a pitch battle just yet. Q is gonna clear some creep on the right side. Queen, Zerglings, Banelings are gonna deal with that. And Ragnarok setting himself up for that next stage of the game. I think when his 1-1 upgrades finish, Ragnarok might just pull the trigger because, you know, he's not really in danger. And you'd think he'd be going up to 80, 90 workers right now to really secure the lead. But there's another simpler way to try and win a tournament game. And I think those upgrades, it's just too juicy to resist. That'd be a great time to just flank in on Cure's third and explode him. Yeah, um, another little push coming in here. I mean, I think Cure's doing what he can to try to clean up this creep. He does have two different sets of uh, medevacs to kind of come in here uh, and do what he can. And, you know, it's not that easy for Zerg when they're basically just reliant on Zerglings. They don't have any mutas. It really is kind of a game of cat and mouse here. Uh, since the mutas are the, the units that can actually deny the presence of the medevacs. Oh, my God. Oh, nice. A few of them did pick up and save, but you don't want to be losing any Marines. Q is doing a great job of fighting back in this game, though. Just applying the pressure with those medevacs, he's actually got the supply relatively even. He's adding a fourth base. Tanks are continuing to produce. He's getting up that tech tree. And Ragnarok, it feels like now he's chosen to go 80 drones and into Hydralisks, but I do think there was a window to either drone up faster or to do some counter damage. So Ragnarok maybe taking his foot off the pedal and giving Cure just a little bit of room to breathe. Yeah, uh, it's going to be shoot away once more here, these double medevacs. The factory, uh, another one has now been started up here. You know, this is looking like a game that could possibly go on for an extremely long period of time. Just, I think in theory, the Terran is probably not going to be able to roam the map anytime soon and push and kill stuff. And when that happens, you know, over the last about three years, it seems like the Terrans instead go, well, I I'm just not going to do that then. I'm going to actually try to camp. I'm going to turtle. I'm going to defend. Just play uh, like Maru. <laughs> just play like Maru. And, and, you know, this is a, a moment where the roles get reversed, right? Suddenly, it's no longer about the Zerg growing and surviving. It, it, the burden is put on the Zerg. Since the Zerg is always going to take half of the map first, always before the Terran, that's just the, the, the rate at which they grow, they can try to basically 
uh, forces Zerg to spend all their resources, and eventually the Terran has one or two bases left and can win. I, I'm not saying that has to be what happens here, but I would not be surprised. I think it's a very good assessment, Tasteless. That usually is what we see players go to here. Uh, from this situation, this map pool, the bases get a little more spread out, but on this map, once you take this expansion, there's one just below it to the south, so you actually get five bases very compact. It's not a bad base to choose to go for that. On the other hand, if you give Ragnarok the entire map, I mean, he's going to be able to choose where and when he attacks. Your defense needs to be perfect. It's also worth pointing out that, um, you know, from Ragnarok's perspective, there's actually not a lot of easy bases to take left over here. Like, he's basically got these corners. You know, this one over here, this is a very pushable location. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, almost one one screen size like this away from where the Terran is. Um, and so you know, that could be uh, uh, something to kind of pay attention to. I mean, especially on a map like this, it could be one of these games where the Zerg is going to be trying to grow into the bottom right and the top left, and it's just going to be Terran probably sitting on five bases, maybe eventually a sixth, just trying to poke those out. The focus there on Ragnarok's face. Got that, uh, the tongue poking out as he's just trying to set everything up. Hydra, Zerglings, Banelings on both sides of the map. Hive going into Spire as well. So Ragnarok is going to try to get him with Hydra Bane and then go into Brugal Divide. And here we go. Zerglings, Hydra's Banelings going on in. The Marines quickly pulling back for Cure. And that is a great hold for Cure. Yeah, that was actually a very poor trade there for Ragnarok. You know, some of these areas, it's very bottleneck-ish. Uh, very hard to actually get through, especially with a good setup like we see there from Cure. And you know, that moment it, it, in there is not that impactful, but if we start to see that as a pattern, I'm going to be worried for Ragnarok. Indeed. The Great Aspire is a, a brilliant call, though. Third Factory is on the way for Cure. He's going to be trying to go for plus three Blue Flame Hellbats as he pushes back this poke on the right side. Uh, when you get the plus three attack on Hellbats with Blue Flame, they do one-shot Zerglings, a massive upgrade. you got some Ghosts there can snipe off the big units. The problem is that he's so Siege Tank reliant, and Broodlords annihilate Siege Tanks. He doesn't have any Thors or anything like that. And I like that Ragnarok's keeping him busy, keeping him really focused on this right now. Looking for the damage, but a nice command center lift off, and Ragnarok pulls back at the right time. Yeah, and you know, another thing to point out that's gonna make the, the Broodlords a pretty strong force is that the Terran kinda stopped dropping. Oh, you know, yeah. considering this is a game where there really isn't anything that can directly take out a, a medevac besides a queen, um, or I guess a hider, but you know what I'm saying, and, and nothing that can pursue it with ease. Um, you know, there, a lot of times when Broodlords do come out, one of the good plays is to try to play around it, right? Hit other locations where the Broodlords are not, but you can't do that in this moment. No, especially with that creep spread now, right? Ragnarok sees the entire map, so the age of the Terran dropping and picking away isn't there, and that's why the Zerg shifting their composition is powerful. Nine Broodlords on the way, the Hydra Bane trying to deny this fifth base, trying to march on forward with the Banelings. But good trades for Cure. That unit's lost tab is really quite juicy for him at a two to one ratio. That's not what the Zerg likes, but I still feel that these Broodlords are hitting at a crisp enough time. Mass Siege Tank Marine is the focus. There's a couple of Ghosts, and what you want against this is Thors. A couple of Thors up front are great at really dissuading the Broodlords from engaging, and you want those Ghosts to have enough energy that you can also get in there and cloak and snipe. Right now, these first nine Broodlords could be massive, massive damage dealers. Yeah, and they're gonna come in here right now, just going over this pillar here, and they're gonna start to shower these Marines with Broodlings. Uh, and again, you know, the Zerg only needs to deny one or two bases for the Terran to really be in peril. Oh, Blinding Cloud's going down on a bunch of these Siege Tanks. So many of them going down. The Banelings are rolling in, but a lot of the Marines and Ghosts do survive. Planetary Fortress on the left side is tanking a bit of damage. Hydra is taking out the Liberator as well. The Broodlords are going to start sieging this down, but they've got to be careful because those Ghosts could move in on the right and start sniping them. Yeah, he's going to slowly chip away at this planetary. I don't know that it can be saved at this point in time. The uh, SCVs are beginning to disappear. A couple yoinks over there to take out those tanks. And this is the play that Ragnarok needed to have if he's going to get that closer. Um, you know, if Terran could just basically deflect every single attack, in the long run, they're going to win. But losing a base like that is huge. Nice pullback micro. Thor's starting to come out as well. The Siege Tank count's been severely diminished, though, so it might be time to just go back to pure Hydra, Zergling, Baneling, add a few Vipers in the mix or Infestors if you want. But once they've killed all the Siege Tanks, suddenly the very basic unit composition becomes very effective again. Okay, more Banes are going to come in here. And when the Zerg gets this much gas banked up, this is a really 
a critical moment in the game because, you know, Zerglings can be made so fast. The same thing with Banelings. So you have this moment where there's so much damage that can come out so quickly that, uh, you know, almost no matter how you cut it, the Terran is going to lose a lot. And what you want to do is try to compound that advantage and keep hitting them over and over and over. Whenever it's the right moment to come in and strike, ooh, oh, it was so sick. Perfectly oh. done. Juicy of Ducks on the Thors taking out the big anti-air unit for the Banelings. So many Banelings. Ragnarok just loves overwhelming with them on mass cures spread seem to be good but there's just so many yeah he's gonna go ahead and get over to these ghosts now beautifully done um and you know this is basically terran stuck on four bases and i think there's enough momentum here from ragnarok we see there were 70 zerglings hatching wow um, that he's gonna be able to rinse and repeat a couple more times and i think we might be going into game two in a little bit yeah i mean it looks like the broodlords might get taken out but then the ling reinforce comes in and says no 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 ragnarok is rich behind this on 93 workers and even that third base is gonna get ransacked Cure way too far down on supply. He had a lot of infrastructure, a lot of upgrades. Command center's coming in. I think if he had just one or two more minutes in this game, it would have been near impossible for Ragnarok to break in, but Ragnarok found the windows, kicked them in, smashed glass on the floor, and he ruined Cure's day. Yeah, I mean, he's really shut him down. And this base that we're seeing landing here, this is really the focal point of this game now, because uh, it doesn't seem like Cure is in any position to go to grow anywhere else. Ragnarok has basically been untouched since the early part of the game where all those Marines were surrounded. Um, and all that Ragnarok has to do is basically what we're seeing right here, is keep hitting him uh, over and over again. Uh, Terran may never be maxed out again if this keeps up. Indeed, it's a very, very hard battle from here. Dropping mules, trying to get those minerals in, replacing the siege tank count to deal with Banelings and the Hydras. But of course, Ragnarok is just moving those workers to the new bases as much as he can, and uh, adding even Burrow in here. The next wave is about to hit, and Cure down 40 workers and down in army supply as well. Cure needs a fantastic engagement and a good perfect hold to get back in this game. Yeah, um, we're running out of map right now, Pig. There's not that many more bases here and Ragnarok is maxed out once again. He's coming in here, he's hitting so hard. The tanks are just dropping. The Banelings are continuing to come up. Actually pretty good shots here from the Marines, but ultimately this is a game of numbers more than a game of control. Cure survives that, but not without heavy losses as Ragnarok is going to be remaxing in a matter of seconds. I do think the Banelings were a little disjointed from the front wave there for Ragnarok. It wasn't the perfect engagement, but I agree with your assessment. It's a, it's a trade he can afford to take. Yeah. Cure, on the other hand, it's like, no, please, just don't trade with me. Let me max out. Let me close that supply gap. These fights are not good for me. He's going to try and do some counter-aggression with a drop, maybe buy himself a bit of time. Yeah, this is actually a good little victory here for Kiri. He's going to come down. He will be able to take that base out, pick up, and then get back to trying to defend. And we're starting to see, you know, as, as well as Ragnarok uh, is playing here, some of the, the limitations of Zerg in the late game where they have these bases that are just so close to the production facilities of Terran, they can come out and shut them down pretty easily. Whoa, lots of units going down here, though. Another 11 SCVs. The Lings and the Banes are mostly gone. You don't want to stay too long with those Hydras. They are expensive units. And it keeps looking like there's tiny little things that go well for Cure. But then you see that there's spine crawlers denying <laughs> mining on his fifth base. And you go, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Um, uh, can we do a quick mineral check up at 12 o'clock? How many minerals are actually over at that base? So this one is starting to mine out. Some of the patches are already gone. Um, and it's about even over there with that other base. So, you know, eventually it's going to be all about this expansion. And I think Ragnarok should have the momentum on his side to maybe shut this down once more. Oh, nice abducts <laughs> on the Vikings as well. He abducted a mule, you madman, Ragnarok. And he actually takes the command center out. It wasn't lifted in time. Uh, and from here, Ragnarok's basically going to mop up the remaining Terran units in this location uh, and further fortify his position as a winning player here in Game 1. Yeah, fantastic moves, and Cure will have to tap out of that first map. Ragnarok handling a very odd build order, very well baited in the overcommitment of the Marines, punished it hard, and it was all his game from there. I don't think we're going to see Cure use that build uh, for the rest of this tournament. I think, very I think he was unlikely. trying something that was uh, 
I don't know, it was a primitive build. I mean, we saw a, a StarCraft II player in 2023 make two barracks in his main. <laughs> okay, I mean, just think about that. Uh, That's like a StarCraft yeah. one build from 1998. I, um, you, you know, he got the cancel on the third, he forced a bunch of lings, and he still ended up getting rolled a little bit later. So yeah. <laughs> it's one of those build orders where, like, I can understand the theory. Is the army roams around and the Zerg's so paranoid he keeps over making army and doesn't have enough drones, but I mean, you just have no information. And yeah. you've got no, no way to scout. Like, well, and, and, and you, yeah. No room for mistakes. You know, it, it really is a game that can remind everybody why we pretty much never see that and always see two medevacs at a certain point in time in the game with a little bit less Marines. Um, and you start to roam is because you know, why would you put yourself in that position? Now, I get it. These guys have played each other so many times uh, in, in competitive situations like this one. You want to try to do something different that might throw them off. But Ragnarok, honestly, played that very, very well. And he was able to harness that early game advantage to really put Kira into a spot where Kira was unable to just play like Morrow, just turtle, just defend, uh, and outlast the Zerg. And, you know, a really impressive showing there when he actually had the spine crawlers hitting the mineral patches, <laughs> you know. Um, an excellent way to do that. But I think this next game should look pretty different. 100%, I mean, We've said that now, and part of me does believe in reading tea leaves and auras and all that sort of stuff, and I feel like the Caster Curse might have hit, and he's like, no, no, no. Three <laughs> barracks in the main on one base now. <laughs> I mean, I, I do wonder. Uh, will we have a cheese, perhaps, or something like that? That could be a possibility as well. But Ragnarok, you know, somebody who was kind of known for a while for, like, nighticing a lot and doing a lot of weird rushes is showing clearly that he is very comfortable in a standard late game. Over here in the upper left, in the red, our Korean Terran player. He is Q. And his opponent in the bottom right side coming out of this tournament with his fist swinging. His build orders are clean and tight. Let's see if he can continue this victorious run. Representing Alpha X, it's Ragnarok. Okay, so. Um I imagine we're going to just have, you know, a command center pretty early here on the low ground. We'll follow it up with a gas um, uh, and tacking as normal. We don't see any SCVs out on the map. No attempts at sneaking a barracks in there. Um, command center first is, you know, it's it's not that weird these days. No, so, it's yeah, common. definitely uh, a good way to play a big map as well, right? I think this was the map Ragnarok uh, tried to do a roach pressure versus Clem on. And that was kind of his mainstay build that got him to the GSL finals, where you just build about eight or nine roaches, skip link speed, go across the map. But that got completely stuffed by the Banshee opening of Clem in that, in that game, in that series. So it's something where every single Terran player, when they're playing Ragnarok, it's like, you know, the one thing you think about at the start of the game is roaches can come and just shove at me in the early game. Whether it be Roach Ravager Ling, just four or five roaches or one of these nine or 10 roach pressures, he loves to throw these pieces of aggression at the Terran. But on a bigger map pool, you might let your guard down a little bit. Yeah, um, this build, I feel like we saw it a lot last year in 2022. Uh, you know, a lot of the Koreans were referring to it, they're nicknaming it the OP build. Um, but, you know, the idea is that you don't want to engage with the uh, the Zerg at all. Now, uh, you know, and, and Zergs are just, it's very unlikely that the Zerg's gonna do a weird rush on a map that's that big. It doesn't mean you couldn't do it, but we're certainly not there in the meta uh, where, you know, cause let's say that Zergs were to do a weird rush, then Terrence could just play normal and get ahead that way. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, this is one of the funny features of RTS is that you don't have any information right at the start of the game and you have to find that out. So you can do a play like this uh, and maybe uh, speed ahead. Um, now. When you go for quick command center right away and go up on two bases, there's a lot of different variations with this. There's as many builds as you can think of from that point. I mean, we've seen it in standard games where they, you know, go for a bunch of barracks and get medevacs and try to push. We've seen it where we've even seen people mech uh, off of that. We've seen plays where uh, they actually get a third command center and keep trying to up the uh, the pace of, of the economic growth. So let's see what exactly uh, Kira's got in store for us with this opening. Well, the Fallings come across to have a poke, realizing no Reaper came across the map. He knows it's Command Center first. The Reaper does clean up one of those Zerglings, and we'll get a second behind this factory, and Stim is on the way. So this is Command Center first into 2-1-1, and this can lead into some nasty two-base pushes. Not something I would have thought would be too popular on this map pool, 
but we've been watching a few Beyond games and he's already shown us some like really disgusting tank spots on pretty much every map. Definitely something where if you've got the economic boost early, going into a big two base push is very tempting. Yeah, um, and we're having the Zerg, uh, you know, grow out here on this third base. Uh, you know, keep in mind on this map, there is a, a pretty easy beeline through the middle. You know, a lot of maps, you, you, you cannot draw a straight line from, you know, point A to point B and have the army actually navigate that one. But this one, um, I think you certainly can. So uh, we'll see when that push comes, if he's going to go down that. We've got Stim about halfway done. The Zerg has not decided uh, that he's at risk of an attack yet. He's going to continue to power and drone up in what is really that big balancing act for the Zerg. You know, is it going to be drones or is it time to make Zerglings and other attacking units? I like how you pointed out that path through the middle because originally when this map came out, I was thinking huge rush distance, takes forever to get across. But once you both take that third at the front, there is exactly just a pretty straight direct path. It's not that big of a distance and it actually becomes quite scary because the Terran is pushing down the middle almost always on this map and the Zergs just basically constantly backstabbing around the flanks, trying to avoid fighting them in those choke points. Yeah, and there is an expansion just north of the third base that, uh, you know, it's not a good expansion for the Zerg, that one right at the top of the screen there, since Terran can basically plant on the low ground and shell that. So let's say that we do get into a long TVZ, and statistically uh, speaking, TVZ is the longest matchup nowadays. Um, that's going to be an interesting moment there to see if the Terran can try to punish the Zerg taking that. Third command center going down, combat shields on the way, but the first marines with Stim and Medivax are arriving. Lings are on the way, but they're not here just yet. Ragnarok's going to pull back for a moment. Got to buy himself a little bit of time, but at the same time, Kua does not want to go too deep in Zerg territory and uh, gets a little bit of damage, killing one or two queens. The Lings are going to make it hard for him to unload in the main. Yeah, it's very fortunate he had those four Zerglings down there. You kind of stop the momentum of the Marines coming out. They can't get out that quickly. But nice maneuvering there from Kira. I mean, the idea of kind of gliding by, taking out a, a queen, and then trying to insta-dump your Marines into the main. Uh, good idea, good tactic, but Ragnarok is able to defend it. Ooh, more Marines joining up for the combat shield timing. This one is actually surprisingly powerful if you're not expecting it. Ragnarok morphing Banelings, but they're not ready just yet. Combat Shields will be kicking in in a moment. Yeah, he is going to go down here and try to fight these Queens. The Banelings are about halfway done. It doesn't look like he's really finding any real damage here. Uh, Ragnarok's doing a good job dancing the uh, Queens back and forth there. And with the Banelings hatched, I don't think there's anything else that Kira can do. I love the way Ragnarok just pulls back on both sides and says, come on, come on into the creep, buddy. Come a bit deeper. And Kira's like, no way, man. I know that's a trap. Both players with a lot of respect for each other. The Ling Bane wants to go and watch out for that Widow Mine. And he is going to just pull away. Uh, there is an expansion being taken over there in the upper right. Um, it's uh, definitely one of the easier expansions on this map for the Zerg to hold. It's, you know, it's funny, like sometimes you see an expansion be taken and you're like, that's the target. That's where I'm gonna hit. <laughs> and there's other ones where they take a base and you go, that's going to be there for the rest of this game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that fourth base is, it's a pretty easy one to hold. Uh, I think we'll probably see continued pressure over in this area right here. I think a lot of this game is going to be played on this screenshot right here on the map. Got to agree with that one, Tasteless. You take this, the, the harder to hold base up front, and then you get a fourth and a fifth that are actually much easier to hold on to as the Zerg. Now, the second Evo Chamber did finish, but melee upgrade has been forgotten by Ragnarok so far, going for the Hydrogen as well, and the Baneling Speed. Meanwhile, Armory is going to be finished well in time to start 2 2 straight away, so Kua might be looking for a big upgrade advantage. Okay, we have another small push coming down here in the middle. Um, so far, honestly, Ragnarok is making this look extremely easy. I mean, there's pretty much no moment that Kira's actually been able to keep his Marines on the ground if Ragnarok chooses to actually engage here. And I, I'm saying that, saying that Kira's actually gotten some pretty good trades anyways, but uh, Ragnarok looking very comfortable. He is going to come in around from the top, but there's Lings and Banelings ready for that. Uh, and similar to what we saw in game one, you know, th there's not a real interest in getting mutas here. It's basically you just keep making queens and banes, keep growing, look where the Terran's coming and be ready to just drive them back out. Indeed, and you can see the first person view of Ragnarok here as he goes into that Hydraling pain play. So far playing a very tight game and he looks kind of fast, right? But he does, you know, have a bit of a reputation for uh, actually falling apart under pressure. But this tournament, he's avoided that almost completely. No one's been able to get him out of his comfort zone. No one's been able to kind of get him in that panicked mode where mistakes start to pile up. 
And I like that he was even using that little tip. You can hover over the supply in the top right of StarCraft to see your worker versus army supply. And it's a rare to catch a pro gamer doing that in the midst yeah. of the action. But Ragnarok just double checking at the correct ratio. Oh my god! Ooh. I was looking at that and kind of in my head, I'm like, well, he'll pick this up here. And I'm, <laughs> I'm probably not even going to remark uh, on it, but uh, a good engagement there. He shuts that down. We've still got Terran sitting back on these three bases. Zerg continuing to grow, continuing uh, to upgrade and power up. Hydralisks are now being incorporated to really add in that damage. And, you know, Ragnarok's, I mean, he's not done getting bases, but he's kind of through that phase of the game where you're like, okay, I've got enough. I've got a real powerful economic engine that's going to be driving me in this game. And, you know, this game in a little bit is probably going to switch from just Terran constantly attacking and lashing out to Zerg beginning to slowly push and try to identify where the Terran wants to grow next and how do they shut that down. Indeed, max out, which means Ragnarok will start banking money. And you know what Ragnarok does when he has money, Tasteless? He makes more Banelings than you could possibly imagine, <laughs> and he smashes them into the Terran. I mean, a Ragnarok of Banelings was kind of like a, a meme term some people were using because there were times where he would roll 50 Banelings off creep and none of them would connect. <laughs> but that is the rare disaster. I think much more common is Ragnarok's Banelings just hitting everything, blowing up all of the Terran's army and leaving it in tatters. I think he was in a much better position than the last game, as long as he's well set up on the defense. You know, it's a funny thing, uh, that Baneling style. Like, uh, there are many moments where you wouldn't want to just have Banelings connected to just anything other than Marines. Uh, but then when you get big enough and you have enough, it doesn't really matter if you're trading effectively because the Terran is working with so few bases, you're like, all right, let's just blow up the planetary then. Let's just blow up tanks yeah. with Bailey. It doesn't matter. Um, but you're right when you say that, you know, occasionally Ragnarok can be a little bit too cavalier with those Bailey. Oh my God, look at how many that is, Tasteless. That is an insane Zerg army. Oh my God, he's just going to continue to come down here. Now, the majority of the infantry actually stay alive. And I got to say, that was kind of one of those moments yes. that we were talking about where it's like, well, oh. that was a very poor trade. I think he didn't appreciate just how many Marines were actually down that ramp. Oh my lord, that was... Yeah, and the, the thing is that they connected with the front rank of Marines, right? It looked like they were going to get on top, but Cure pulled back at the perfect time and now counter-attacking with a monstrous force. Cure wants to go straight for the victory. He says, no, no, you made a big mistake there. But seeing more Banelings have morphed, he's going to chill out, wait for his siege tanks to get forward. A beautiful defense turned into offense for Cure and a completely different game to the last one. Yeah, Kier now really able to leverage his position. He's going to try to come out. Ragnarok again with so many more Banelings, but he's got to be careful because if he misuses these Banes this time around, suddenly Zerg bases are going to start falling. Ooh, nice Ling run by here for Ragnarok to buy himself some decent trades. A bit of time there. And uh, oh, oh, the distraction! Fighting in two places at once. Zerg versus Terran all about the war of attention. Yeah, nicely done there. It looks like the push is starting to really soften up. I think that Ragnarok actually can, uh, you know, do okay here and try to hold on. But let's remember that Terran is far from three bases now. They're really starting to send these command centers around the map. This is another map where we're splitting it in half. is certainly an acceptable way to play. And we may be going in that direction once more. 87 workers for the Terran. He has lost a lot of his siege tanks. Nine going down, only three left on the map. Q is going to get in here, though, and take out a base. A massive success. Liberators, oh, they're flying out, but a big ling run by for Ragnarok's going to look to answer that in kind. Okay, he's going to come in here now. I don't see anything really to, to defend. We have some more lings and queens coming down here, but this hatchery is going to easily be taken out. Meanwhile, that counterattack, you know, that's one of the plays you can do in these moments. Uh, try to come in there and wipe those SCVs out, but you never want to have that happening while you're also losing bases of your own as a Zerg. No, not at all. He's got so few painlings in here, and Ragnarok actually <laughs> laughing. I think he's realizing just how bad this situation is. Laughing a little bit as, uh, oh, this is... You, you don't see that very often, you know what I mean? In a high-pressure situation like this, like, Ragnarok actually amused with this game. Uh, that honestly, you know, I think he was in a much better spot early on, but he has hemorrhaged so many Banelings, it's now getting pretty rough. Vipers and Lurkers trying to come out to turn these tides, but it's a lot of tanks and Liberators, and now as the Marauders come in as well, I don't know if there's really a way, just a, a few Lurkers can turn it around. Ragnarok, I, in my mind, he should keep backstabbing and kind of rebuilding these hatcheries and, and play kind of ping pong. You know, don't don't stand and fight, because around this ridgeline, that is a terrible position for the Zerg. 
Yeah, we're going to see this hatchery probably fall here. Ragnarok going to come in here with these Bailings now. The tanks are very evenly split up. Does he have enough to simply overpower this? The Bane's unable to connect with these Marines down here at the bottom. Oh, there weren't many Marines on the north side, so the tanks did go down, but on the other side, you just got to realize, like, hey, the Libs are still there. The left side didn't go down for Terran at all. And remember, that was the entire Zerg army against only a fraction of the Terran. The rest of the Terran is marching across the map here. They're consolidating their forces in this situation. And Ragnarok has to tap out. GG, Cure does take that game, but, you know, it's worth pointing out that you know Ragnarok did not use those Banelings effectively. I mean, he basically got to the phase of the game that he was trying to build up to, and he was wasteful. Yeah. He, he lost, I can't even count how many Banes in situations where I think he could have done much, much better. Yeah, that was like 65 Banelings, maybe more than that. And it was actually kind of crazy timing because we just talked about a few seconds earlier how, you know, he, he was infamous for sometimes making that mistake. And, that was it, poking its head up, but uh, hats off to Cure for hanging on. A lot of Terrans panic in those situations because you've got to be spreading backwards in like two or three directions. All it takes is for you to be half a second late and 30, 40 Marines get taken out by a couple of Banelings. That game is completely different. Yeah, you know, it's uh, uh, obviously a win is a good thing here for Cure, but I don't know how good he's feeling from that because you look at that and you go, well, I mean, I guess if you make another mistake like that again, I'll win again. But I think in Ragnarok, uh, you know, managed that a little bit better. I do think he does win there. Um, so I'm still saying Ragnarok probably going to be the guy that takes this, um, but he needs to kind of tidy up that late game. Well, he seems to have a good attitude about it. I mean, if he's <laughs> laughing and smiling during the matches or his cure, yeah, he came out on top, but he looked kind of much more like, oh, oh my Lord, I barely got through yeah. there, you know? Okay. Gotta, gotta play good, gotta play well, whereas Ragnarok seems to just be going like, hey, I'm here to have fun, play my best StarCraft, and just kind of go with it. The next map is going to be near Humanity, which is a very interesting map. There's amazing siege tank positions. We've got a collapsible center of the map where you can block off the entire midground. Uh, you've got gold minerals that can be mined out to get access to a third base. It's a very unique map, and I wonder what special tactics the players are going to be bringing out there. Yeah, I do wonder if we're going to have a, a different opening that's going to be tailored for this map, um, as it's so important for both these guys to win this. This is a very tough group they're in right now. Um, and Ragnarok, you know, looking a little flustered there. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. I think he's uh, quite he's, embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> that, that looked like the, oh, man, did I really do that? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. He's, he's, he's reliving those moments <laughs> where the Banelings were wasted. Anyways, guys, we're ready to now go into game number three and find out who actually wins between these two. Our first player in the upper left in the red, he is Kier. <laughs> And in the bottom right side, in the blue, representing Alpha Rex, it's Ragnarok. Oh, we'll get the bass guitar out now. Yeah. Game three always gets have, the bass. That's the rule of stuff. It's like James Bond music playing right now. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to go into this uh, this game now. And again, I, I want to kind of echo what you were saying earlier, Pig. That you know, this is a very different map. Um, and it's a very new map, so you know, maybe we will have some kind of interesting styles or plays here going forward. Seen a lot of uh, Protoss versus Zerg on it so far this tournament. I haven't seen too many Terran versus Zerg matches, so very much got my eyes open to see how they approach it. Now, Q is going Command Center first again. Oh. I think um, that is a That's pretty a quick gas quick, pool, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, now this is uh, this could be a big problem here for Cure. Um, yeah. Basically... Yeah, we were actually talking about this uh, earlier, um, that, you know, you can go for a, a quick command center, and a lot of times you get away with it because, like, Zergs are not just going to, like, one base rush. But uh, in this game, we are going to have an extremely fast pool, which means there are opportunities to engage the Terran right away. Yeah, we'll see what Ragnarok has in mind. Uh, he's gone to 18 supply, so he's not going for, like, six Zerglings or anything, which is quite good because right. if you're looking to deny the command center, doesn't work. The command center is built so quickly, it's already finished by the time you get across. And unfortunately, he's building four Zerglings to start, which, I mean, they could find some damage. It's only one barracks into third command center? Wow. Okay. Cure! The greed knows no bounds. I mean, you were talking about if he does something to punish him. If Ragnarok were to go for, like, a Roachling attack or something like that... He probably wins. Almost certain. Yeah. This is the greediest build you can possibly do. Yeah, this is... um. 
this is going to be a lot of fun to see what exactly happens here. Now, um, even though he didn't rush with Lings right away, it doesn't mean he can't rush a little bit later on here. Um, the question is going to be, can the Zerg identify that, or will the Zerg just kind of try to predict it without actually scouting? I don't know. Um, now, you know, even just flooding Lings in the natural, like, sure, there's no way there's, there's a factory, There's not right? a wall in here. <laughs> no you wall, know, this, no this factory, is, no Hellions. This like, is can't. like, I mean, Ooh. such an exposed setup. Like, th these are the kind of replays you watch and you're filled with anger. If you lose the game, you're like, he's doing what? Um, I mean, there's such, there's is, such metagaming going on, Tasteless. Yeah. He's going four gases. Four gases? Is he going mass battle cruiser or something? Like, what is this? Is a strange build from Cure. I think it's a weird setup into mech, and I think he's he's basically really trying to do some 300 IQ builds, and he's about to get punished. Yeah, the legs are going to come out here, and I mean, this is one of these things that sort of solves themselves here from the Zerg when you start to realize, well, there's just there's just literally nothing here. Um, oh, and I'm just staring at Cure's camera right now. He's yeah. like, oh man. Oh, GG, there it is. Not all games are created equally. <laughs> no, um, great game yeah, is either. <laughs> Ragnarok is just laughing. That is, oh, it's like finding a winning lottery ticket there. You're like, oh, he just doesn't have anything. He was doing everything except making an army in that game. That is the sort of weird mind games